Of all these faces, only six are going to the Olympic Games. Tonight, only one will be U.S. national champion. This is the Kiel Center in St. Louis, Missouri, site of the 2000 U.S. Gymnastics Championships. There are two things we know for certain. In about an hour, we will know who the 2000 national champion of the United States is, and we'll have a list of 12 gymnasts, maybe more, who'll be invited to the Olympic trials in Boston the third week in August. This year, the women are going to be selected as follows. Bella Caroli, with his fabulous Olympic credentials, will go into a room at some point during the Olympic trials with three other members of a selection committee. They will come out with a list of six, and that list may or may not go according to the final standings. That has some coaches and definitely the athletes uneasy tonight, right, Tim Daggett? Oh, it certainly does. The athletes and coaches are most, most frustrated by the fact that they don't know exactly what it'll take to make this Olympic team. In the past, typically, at the end of the competition, if you were in the top six, you got to go to the Olympic Games. Now it's a committee, it's Bella Caroli, and it's not scores that matter, it's opinions. So what is the procedure that will take place in that room? That remains a mystery to many. And the selection committee has been ordered by USA Gymnastics not to talk to us about it or anybody else. Right, Elfie Schlegel? Well, one person on that committee, along with myself, knows exactly what it feels like to have an Olympics taken away. Well, the other day in practice, I went up to Tracy Talavera, who is on that committee, just to say hello. She looked at me and said, Elfie, you're with NBC. I can't talk to you. A process like this brings back bad memories for Bill and Donna Strauss. Their gymnast Kim Kelly was fifth after the Olympic trials in 92 and they thought they were headed to Barcelona. All of a sudden people went into a room and came out with the news that Kim Kelly was out. They were devastated and now they're the coaches of Kristen Maloney, the defending national champion. They don't want to see history come close to being repeated. Let's go to Beth Ruyek. Thanks, Al. Well, this is a copy of the selection procedures that the Strausses, along with every coach and every athlete, have to sign. It indicates that they understand and agree to those procedures. Well, Donna Strauss has signed it, but she has crossed out the word agree. It's a small protest, but she and others who have also done the same thing feel that it's one way that they can express their dissatisfaction with this selection process. As overseer of the U.S. Olympic effort, Bella Caroli continues to talk to us and has all good things to say about Kristen Maloney, who leads after the preliminaries. Elise Ray with a very strong showing just a few weeks after knee surgery. And Vanessa Atler once again had to battle the uneven bars and didn't win that battle. Today, that will be her last event. Not many athletes, Al, would want to start on the balance beam, but I think for Vanessa, this has always been a strong event. She has not had problems at the national events. After the World Championships, Vanessa Atler injured ankle, two surgeries to remove bone chips, just recently starting to feel no pain in that ankle. We talked a lot about the special requirements on balance beam and what the judges are specifically looking for. One of the areas are connecting combinations like jumps right here, which she does perfectly well. The whole key is not having any visible pause whatsoever from one element to the other. Very difficult skill right here, but Vanessa was supposed to connect a jump, which would have given her two tenths bonus for the combination. She won't get that. Many of the gymnasts that we've seen here in St. Louis are on a raw emotional edge, Vanessa included. From last year's nationals to this year, she's split with her coaches, Beth and Steve Rybacki in Southern California, moving to train in Plano, Texas with world and Olympic gold medalist Valeri Liukin. Now he was known for taking things to new heights in his career, and that's what they're hoping for with Vanessa, but she still has the uneven bars specter hanging over her head.
There's Valeri. Well, how did she do, guys? I think Bella will be impressed with the competitive fire that she showed through the routine. This is, this is what Vanessa is known for. Powerful acrobatic series here, ending in a layout. Beautifully done, she was solid, but it's the smaller skills, sometimes the easier ones that she has some trouble with, and she did here. She will lose some valuable tenths from that combination that good. she didn't do. That's good, that's good, that's good. Don't worry, man. everything's good. Here you go, here you go. Good job, man. Okay. Gotta say it, he was one of my idols. First guy in the world, triple back somersault on floor. Unreal. Now we get to a subplot here, a vindication perhaps for the Rybackis. Jamie Dancher had also left their gym for a time, but now she's back. A year ago, you never could have predicted that she could thrust herself back into the Olympic picture. But after day one, she's done exactly that. time for Jamie Dancer. She picks up right where she left off in the preliminaries, but if you're looking for a gymnast who might be concerned about the selection procedures, here's Jamie Dancher. Awesome, says Beth Rybacki. Her husband Steve there as well. Is she coming on too late? Nice, Arabia. Well, well, Jamie missed the June training camp because of an injury, and at that time, Bella questioned her commitment. No question about her commitment now. Here's Elise Ray. You know, there's a lot of games within the game. This is a, a young lady that's certainly going to be on that Olympic team unless something disastrous goes wrong. But on this event right here, she has an opportunity to be an Olympic medalist, maybe a gold medalist. And she's planning on unveiling a combination that could be one of the major buzzes in Sydney, Australia. Comes up right here, two releases in a row. There's one. Oh! Unbelievable. Nothing like unveiling a skill at the national championships with the title on the line. That is big time, trend setting, buzz creating gymnastics. A second awesome, this one from Coach Kelly Hill. The U.S. Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 2000 Olympic Games. The buzz at the Kiel Center continues. Can you believe how good Jamie Dancher looks? A 9.75, and we've seen some big-time gymnastics already. Elise Ray starts off with a 9.85. Clearly the field is not going to allow Kristen Maloney to win a third straight national championship easily. One thing you can say about American gymnastics that you couldn't say only a year ago is that the United States has a deep effort and they have a lot of good gymnasts to choose from for Sydney. And Dominique Dawes is part of that depth. She came out of retirement, looked awesome at the training camp in June and you know that Bella Crowley would love a veteran with this experience for the team. There have been five of those camps and we mentioned yesterday that Bella calls Dominique Dawes the biggest surprise overall. One of the prettiest release skills 
in women's gymnastics. Gorgeous. Really is remarkable what she's trying to do with so little time in preparation, but Coach Kelly Hill says that this young lady does better when she knows her back is up against the wall. It's catching. They're sticking them all over the keel set. Kelly Hill a little relieved. Dominique Mociano would love the feeling of relief, but she's not going to get one until this day is done. She wants to get to the next step, the Olympic trials. To do that, she must finish top 12 here tonight in St. Louis. Remember, injured her ankle in the first day of competition. Oh. Wow. Missed her hand. Here comes Mary Lee Tracy. Dom, don't get ahead of yourself. Okay, you need a, now you need to make up here. This needs to be big over the top and stuck cold. Make sure that you are present. Feel your body. These two wish they had more time, but they don't. They've got tonight. Come Bella on. knows all about the Magnificent Seven when they're at their best, like Dominique Dawes was in her first year team. But this is Dominique Mochianu, who has not competed for two years. So she has to reprove herself. Bella has said they have to show me that competitive fire. One and a half twist. Pick it up. All right. All right. Much better, Paul. Firm hand placement on the horse. All right, tighten your mind up, all right? We got he three is more to go. Let's go. Watching everything. So Dominic Mociano moves on. As we go across Keel Center to Kristen Maloney. Trying to win for the third straight year. Not since Kim Zemeskel has anyone done that. She has a really tough exercise planned, and the other evening she did not hit her bar routine, the, the one that she had planned to do. Of course, she moved on, got a fairly decent score, but lots of difficulty, and it's very tough to hit all these skills. That's where it went wrong, right there, and she's hitting plan A. Well, very close, uh, Coach Jack Carter right there. Looked like he might have assisted her. Which would be a hefty deduction. Well, good landing. Guys, I've talked to Jack Carter about this. They are so concerned about Kristen Maloney's surgically repaired shoulder that if his opinion during the routine she looks like she's setting up for a fall toward that shoulder. He will step in and risk the 5-10th deduction. Got to be in there for the safety of the athlete, no question about it. Let's take a look, though. This is a 5-10th deduction. If they do, if he does touch her and assist, kind of hard, I don't know, kind of hard to see from that. Right here, we'll take a, another look. Oh, yeah, no question. But the judges do not take the deduction. She gets a 9-6, another big score. Took us two replays to definitely know if the judges aren't sure, they're not going to take that deduction. Dominique Mociano gets an 8.912 vaulting average. She can still think about the trials. She's in 11th place. As we look at the standings after the first rotation, Elise Ray, who is thought of by many gymnastics fans to be America's best, but has never stepped up in a competition like this, has the lead. It's two tenths. Can she hold it? What is Kristen Maloney's response? And can Vanessa Atler continue her upward momentum and get on the good side of Bella Caroli here tonight in St. Louis? Alyssa Beckerman is good enough to have an Olympic dream, but like everyone else, she's got to survive the procedure. We've told you about the four-person selection committee with Bella Caroli as a part of it. If you read the selection procedures carefully, you can see that everything is worded so that this will be Bella Caroli's team in Sydney. And while that frustrates many of the athletes and coaches, he is the only one in America deserving of that responsibility. You know, Mary Lee Tracy told me that Alyssa is one of her greatest challenges in the gym. She says she competes best in competition when she doesn't overload her mind with too many corrections. Go She has an absolutely beautiful line on this event. 
swings incredibly well. Right now in seventh place. Wow. We are seeing at every turn the top performers turning in top performances. Great job. Oh, good work on the Healy Jaeger. Oh, Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I got jump out of my pants on that you Jaeger. <gasps> good job, Liz. Coaches living that routine on the floor. It amazes me how they always nitpick every single Sorry. element, but not this one. One of the highlights of her routine, certainly the dismount, because she stuck it cold. You know, the legs come apart there. It's important to note that judges really can't see that because they are sitting at the side. We have the advantage of having eyes all over this arena. Of coaching three gymnasts here, Mary Lee Tracy says, it's easy. It's different than what you might expect. Back to Elise Ray. She's got the lead. Maybe you can put in perspective what finally winning here, if we can conceive of that, would mean to the career of Elise Ray. Well, it would be gigantic, and the most important thing is every competition that they are in will help to determine not just who makes the team, but where they will compete in Sydney, Australia. In gymnastics, scores tend to escalate, and if you're at the end of the lineup, then you're the one that has the best shot to win the medal. Now, if Elise Ray could pull this off, and if Kristen Maloney and Vanessa Atler make the Olympic team, that would give the United States three national champions on the squad. Pretty impressive. This is by far one of the routines that should be considered in being off late in the lineup. I mentioned it the first day. One of the things about Elise is the beauty of her work. She pays attention to details like pointing her toes and working up high on her toes in between all the acrobatic skills. And it's important to note that the international judges love this type of work. That's a connection right there. She went right into the wolf jump. She'll get credit for it. A little bit different dismount here. Gainer double twist. Well, you really feel the momentum building, don't you? I mean, the crowd, the energy, the noise, the crying, the emotions, the big scores, one after another. We'll see now if Vanessa Atler can continue. She started after the uneven bars in the preliminaries in 21st place, and all she's done is climb all the way up to fourth. Big comeback in progress. Becky's and now trains with this man, Valery Lyukin. That routine choreographed by former Soviet great Natalia Marakova. Let's take you back for Elise Ray's score on the beam. She's going to hold on to the lead. 
with a 9.70. And now we get the numbers on Vanessa Atler, who is going to move up another place. She has moved from 21st to 3rd. Yeah, let out a deep breath. Two more rotations to go. Elise Ray has increased her lead over Kristen Maloney. And Vanessa Atler, she might not be done climbing. We'll have to wait and see as the U.S. Gymnastics Championships continues all under the watchful eye of the man who runs the show. So far here tonight in St. Louis, Elise Ray has done the job. She's recorded a 9.85 on the uneven bars and a 9.7 on the balance beam to rocket to the lead for the national championship. Here she is on floor. well here but it is going to score very well internationally quick update on the magnificent seven we got a glimpse of jc phelps and shannon miller in the preliminaries they both withdrawn and petitioned their way to the olympic trials amy chow gets set for beam trying to overcome a mishap on the uneven bars in the last rotation and what happened here is she actually came a little bit too close to the bar on this release skill and that doesn't give her time or enough swing to set up for this next element right here can't get her hands around the bar. That smarts. The great thing is most gymnasts, when they have a fall like that, they lose the bonus in addition to the fall. She's so overloaded. She still starts from a 10, so it's just the fall ends up with a 9.125. Not a disaster. Last night, when asked about the leaders of the team, Amy Chow was one of three names mentioned by Bella Caroli to our Beth Ruyak. Maloney. Ray and Chow. Amy's coaches, Diane Amos and Mark Young, were most worried about this event for Amy, but the first night of competition, she had one of the top scores. And watch this element, full twisting, back somersault. Just imagine all that goes on, and she does it with her legs straight. I'll tell you what, that skill alone puts her at the same level as top international athletes. Pretty, pretty combination right here. Again, giving her lots of bonus points. She had no problem connecting them. Amy is the only Mag 7 gymnast that really never, oops, small balance check there. That'll cost her a little bit. She's really the only member from that 96 gold medal team that never stopped training. Big skill. Good purple though. 
So there's no carryover emotionally or physically or any way from her misfortune on the uneven bars. Elise Ray puts up another big number. This one between her and Kristen Maloney could go right down to the wire. Amy Chow with her coach Mark Young looks happy with a 9.625. She should come close to holding her standing, which going in was fifth. Going in for Krista Maloney was second, and she has seen Elise Ray put up a 9.8. Kristen posted a big score the other night. This routine has some of the hardest tumbling in the world. that can match that tumbling. All these athletes battling injury, but her story more significant, one of the most difficult tumbling routines in the world. After the world championship, she had a rod inserted down her tibia to stabilize a stress fracture, and she's still able to tumble like that. Amazing. Wow. I love the way you put that down. Wow. Elfie Schlegel and Tim Daggett have columns, and Krista Maloney has a journal at NBCOlympics.com. Life at the top is difficult, but fun. We'll see how close Krista Maloney gets to Elise Ray after this. In St. Louis, the defending national champion, Krista Maloney, puts up a 9.85 and still trails Elise Ray by three tenths. But if they do the same as they did in the preliminaries in the final rotation, Maloney can come back to win. Still in the third rotation for Vanessa Atler, who after two events, was in third place. A big comeback underway, but in preparation for the vault, we caught her taping up a big toe. Now, this may have been an injury that she did in warm-ups here or exacerbated a previous condition, but listen up to Valeri Lyukin. No, stop that now. I can't stop help it. Yes, you can, come on. Tough love. Yeah, he's trying to toughen her up. Remember, Bella is watching from the sidelines. He's right in front of the vault. Here she goes now for vault number one. She's got two of the biggest vaults on the U.S. team. First one, double twisting Yurchenko. No pain, no wincing, no evidence. It seems for Vanessa it's very, very little about technique, quite a bit about getting her in the right state of mind, keeping her focused. Real natural talent when it comes to doing this type of vault for Vanessa. Not one of the strongest ones I've seen her do, however. And Lucan said, no piking, keep your body totally stretched, totally straight. We'll see if she can pull that off. So they survive another episode. The first vault was a 9.4. 
And I'll tell you, you know, this sport, it makes a lot of dreams come true, but it also creates its share of heartbreaks. This young lady, when she left the Rybeckys, it just ripped them apart. Now their only hope of getting to Sydney lies with this young lady, Jamie Dancher. And Tim, the Rybackys thought they had given their heart and soul to Vanessa Atler and that they were much more than just coaches. Yeah, they thought there was a special bond there. Beth knew she'd be there when Vanessa married, wanted to hold her first child. It really ripped them apart. And now they've moved on, and it's hard not to feel that they feel vindicated for what Jamie Dancher has done in these U.S. championships. Jamie Dancher told me when she went back to the ride, Becky, she said, I can't promise you anything but desire and effort. And they said, Jamie, that's all we've ever wanted you to do. She has really been having the meat of her life. And remember, Bella is just looking for consistency. He wants to see two in a row. When I watch Jamie on bars, it, it just looks like she's playing. Very effortless. She's done it again. One more, just one more, and then they can talk about this newfound consistency. Back to Vanessa Atler we go. She gets a 9.45 for her second vault. That's an average of 9.425. Meanwhile, the Rybackys, Jamie Dancher, gets a 9.60. So the standings after three rotations are filled with irony because it is Jamie Dancher who moves Vanessa Atler down to fourth place. Disappointing championships for Morgan White. And remember, the top 12 here go to the Olympic trials in August, and those can be seen here on NBC. Here is Bella Caroli in the middle of the selection controversy and surrounded there by the members of his selection committee. It was an easy commute for Bob Costas here to the Keel Center. He lives in St. Louis and amazingly will leave for Sydney in just a couple of weeks. So the preparation is about to begin. Bob, yesterday you spent a lot of time with Bella Caroli mm -hmm. and he's involved now in this big controversy here in women's gymnastics about selection. What did you learn about where he's coming from? Uh, I don't pretend to be an expert in all the arcane ins and outs, but the point he kept making, and much of the interview will be seen on the Olympic trials uh, in a few weeks, but the point he kept making is there's a strategic element to this and you have to be able to use subjective criteria in selecting the team because you may want to have a woman on the team who isn't necessarily one of the half dozen best all-rounders but can help in a specific event. So this event and the trials are a guideline, but he feels they should not be the be-all and end-all when it comes to selecting the team. And maybe the parallel to use is the way they selected the Olympic basketball team prior to the dream team concept. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily the guys with the highest average points or the guys who are going to be taken uh, highest in the NBA draft. Bobby Knight left Charles Barkley off the team one year. He had his reasons. Now, last week you may have seen in the track and field trials, Michael Johnson pulls up with a bad hamstring and has no recourse to petition into the games and obviously has yeah. the credentials to do so. And then there's a woman who loses her Olympic dream by a hundredth of a second. On that topic, what do you think they could do to fix that? It seems to me that one thing they could do is make a rule that says the reigning world record holder or the reigning Olympic gold medalist in any event, provided that he or she has posted a competitive time in that event sometime in the six months, let's say, prior to the Olympic Games, gets an automatic pass into the Games. That seems fair. All right. Enjoy the flight to Sydney if that's possible. Thanks. I will. 14 hours. See you there. All Bob right. Costas, the host of NBC's coverage of the Olympic Games in Sydney. We'll be back for the U.S. Gymnastics Championships after this. Back in St. Louis, Vanessa Atler stands in front of her years-long problem, the uneven bars. She started with the uneven bars in the preliminary round and stumbled. Fell to 21st, battled back, 8th, 6th, 3rd, now 4th. How did she look in warm-ups? Well, I'm not quite sure how to read Vanessa's warm-ups anymore, but just moments ago, it was very shaky. The other night, though, she was great in warm-ups and stumbled in the competition. Little hesitation there, but she dealt with it. That very good sign. Here's where she also had other problems the other night. No problem tonight. <laughs> Oliver releases finished. Just the dismount. This would be a big step for Vanessa Atler.
she's got to feel like she's survived this, right? Oh, this is a great thing, you know. As a coach, you're looking for your athlete, obviously, to be successful, but sometimes you just get lucky and things go great. She actually fought through that. That's an even better sign. Back to the two-time national champion looking for the trifecta. Again, the difference is about three-tenths. And if this plays out the way they did in the preliminaries, Maloney is good enough to come from behind and win. Now, that, that is a large step, and it is going to cost her some valuable points. But we have to remember that Maloney does have the edge over Elise Ray on this apparatus. This start value is a 9.8. The next vault she's planning to do is a 9.9, which is so much greater than what Elise Ray has planned. First vault score 9.325. That's lower than either of her two vaults in the preliminary, so she needs to pick it up. Yeah, she needs a big vault here. She's trailing by three tenths. Well, well pretty darn good, but Still that small hop on the landing. And we're dealing in a world of tenths here. Good meet today. Good meet today. Way to go. Good, Good meet job. Today. All right. Good job. Ella Caroli with a little wave from the distance. Feel his presence if you're one of these gymnasts at every turn. The number for Vanessa Atler, 9.275. She will finish third or fourth, which is great considering how she started, depending on what happens to Jamie Dancher. Here's the number for Kristen Maloney, an average of 9.425. They check the numbers and punch them. It's going to be close. For Jamie Dancher to go through two days of competition amidst this pressure and not put up one bad number in eight events would be enormous. That's where she stands right now with one event to go. And that event is B. Not an easy one to do that on. I can't believe how positive her mindset has been throughout these entire championships. She is clearly sending a message to everyone that she is not out of this race at all. aggressive and so sure about her every move. Because of the injuries and some of the non-participation in the camps, Bella really not all that high on Jamie Dancher going eight routines in a row. Hitting him in this championships would be a huge mark in her corner. <laughs> Tell you what. She's taken the apple cart and flipped it upside down. You are on today. Good job. I like it. Take Beth and Steve Rybacki back to the day when they realized Vanessa Atler was leaving them and put them here today. They yeah, never would have believed it. I have never seen Jamie Dancher look so good and so on. And look at this dismount, just cat-like. She knew exactly where she wanted to be. And right here, you are looking at the rebirth of an Olympic dream. Jamie Dancher will finish third. And how can you not love a competition that comes down to the final vaults? That's exactly what we've got as Elise Ray prepares for the first of two. Final reminders from Coach Kelly Hill. Kristen Maloney wants to know if her vault score of 9.425 is good enough to come from behind and win. After the preliminary, she had the lead. And Elise Ray has lots of support. Mom and dad anxiously awaiting the outcome. So we crunch the numbers. She needs a 9.175 to win. Doesn't sound like much for someone who's prepared to be the U.S. national champion, but in the preliminaries, she only scored a 9.037. And what's interesting here is she's actually going to throw her more difficult vault first. 
Good ball, going to get a good score. Let's talk about the strategy, though, of going for the more difficult vault from the first night to this night. Well, the big question here is she, we know that she's working on a more difficult vault, and it wouldn't surprise me if they're going to do it here for the first time. This one's only out of a 9.8, one and a half twist. Big hop, but she's going to get a decent score here. She a gets a 9.35. That means the second vault, I mean, would have to be a total breakdown for her not to win it. Now, Krista Maloney knows the deal. Kelly Hill, I'm sure, has the numbers, and she is poised to celebrate. But I'll tell you, Al, if, if I'm guessing at this point, I would say something's up here. She already unveiled a new element on the uneven bars. It wouldn't surprise me. Kelly looked a little bit nervous there. I think she's going to do it. I think she's going to do the double twist. Huge. Yeah. Look at Bella Caroli, look at the crowd, look at Kelly Hill, and look at Elise Ray. That seals it, your 2000 U.S. National Champion. You have to admire the aggressiveness. Good, Elise. Congratulations. Good, Congratulations. Great job. All right. Finally, everybody can exhale. So cool. If Elise had any criticisms, it was that she wasn't a powerful vaulter and really needed to improve. Well, she's come a long way. way. That is a way. Good job. All right. And Krista Maloney, one of the first there. She didn't lose this. We mentioned this before. This was a, a competition where Kristen went out and performed well, and Elise Ray just went and won it by a little under three tenths. Then Jamie Dancher, the surprise. And finally down, you get to the names who will all go to the Olympic trials, including Dominique Dawes and Dominique Mosciano. Beth? Thanks, Al. Congratulations, your first national championship, Elise. Thank you. It's pretty overwhelming, um, but I had a really, really good time. And I just felt really great about myself the whole meet. And um, I'm just thrilled. This whole progress through Worlds, now through a national championship and on to Sydney, you've talked about it being beyond skill, that it's 100% a mental game at this point for you. It is. Um, you know, I, I was feeling really focused coming into the meet, and, you know, two days of all-around is really, you know, a check of consistency and, you know, your own personal focus. And I just really tried to stay focused with me and with Kelly and with Jen and my teammates, and I really felt like I did that. Has this win given you extra confidence in the few seconds you've had to absorb it now going into Sydney? And do you feel like you're ready to lead an Olympic team? Um, it really has boosted my confidence. Um, you know, it was, this title was in the back of my head. Um, I was almost a little scared to believe that I could do it. But, you know, when it came down to it, I really felt kind of a fire in me that was really good to know I have. Congratulations. We'll see you in Boston at Olympic Trials Thank Lease. you. Now there are three steps to go. One last camp and then the trials. This was tension-filled gymnastics with emotion, good and sad bursting at every turn. Years and years of commitment about to be finally judged. Dominique Dawes started slowly, but showed her form, a valuable veteran. Jamie Dancher is the big surprise at St. Louis. Somehow in that Southern California gym, she recaptured an inner strength, nudged by coaches who've proven they can coach. Morgan White, expected to be near the top, didn't work out, and she's running out of time. What of Vanessa Adler and her new coach? Can they solve her ongoing problem with the three weeks they have? Has that affected her Olympic chance? He's watched it all, and he is the man who singled out Amy Chow as one of his quiet leaders, who's one goal, who knows how to do it. Choices, choices, choices. Where does this all leave Alyssa Beckerman? Is she to be a victim of the numbers or Sydney bound? Here in St. Louis, it was the young stars against the old guard, and the kids won out. With Elise Ray going out and grabbing the biggest win of her career, with the Olympics less than two months away, we have to say her timing is a perfect 10. Boston, here they come. <laughs>